when you look at this problem, you can approach it one of two ways. Okay, let's take the, the first way that we can approach it is, again, how many of you would approach this by factoring? How many by rewriting as a complex fraction? Only one person doing it, two people. All right, how many people have not done this question yet? Okay, why don't you take a few minutes okay, to work on this and then... All right, guys, so let me go ahead and kind of start talking through this. All right, the first uh, approach I'll take is the approach of factoring. Okay. How many of you were trying to factor? So just one or two. Right. In my opinion, if you can factor, it's going to be easier. Right. There's less to organize than any of the students that I've gone over work with. Um, there's fewer mistakes when you factor than when you're trying to work with complex numbers. I'll do both. Okay, I'll show you both ways. But um, I want to go through factoring first. Okay, when you look at this, you have two groups of factors separated by a negative. So keeping that in mind, are there any common factors or bases that are common to both of these groups? Let's look number-wise first. So we have a negative 2 and a 2 gives us a negative 4. Here we have a negative 3. Any common factors between those? No. So let's go to the next base, which we see this monomial factor of x. So this left group has an x. This right group has no x's. So once again, no common base there. So let's go to the binomials. We have an x squared minus 3. Is that a common base in both groups? Yeah, so I'm going to take that out. And you always take out the smallest power. So which of these numbers is further to the left on a number line? Negative 3 or negative 2? So there's our common factor that we're removing from this base. And then we have one final base, x plus 1. Is that shared between both groups? Yeah. And we're going to take out the smallest power, which is 2. Okay. Now, whatever's left inside has to have the exact same form as the original, one group minus another group. So let's see how, how these affect what's left. So we're taking out, meaning we're subtracting the powers. So minus a negative 3 is like adding the opposite. So this whole factor came out. And then a minus 2 here. So when we look to see what's left, we have a negative 2 times 2, which is a negative 4, times this x, times 1x plus 1. So here's the remaining factors in the first group. In the second group, we're taking out a power of negative 3 here. So minus a minus becomes a plus. We're taking out a power of 2, which in effect takes out that entire binomial factor. So in the second group, we're left with 3, and then this x squared minus 3 to the positive 1 is our remaining factor. Okay, and this is all over. We can simplify here. Uh, power to a power, we do what with the powers? Multiply. So we get x plus 1 to the sixth here. Okay, so we've got two things that we have to continue with. Yeah, Erica. On. A two and a three. You could, if you wanted to. Eventually, it'll, it's going to come out anyway. So if you wanted to at the beginning, you could. And so here, what we can do is we can move any negative powers down. So this x squared minus 3 to the third, we move it down. So we change the sign of its power. Okay, also, we can move this down. Well, moving it down is basically just canceling, right? We have x plus 1 squared, x plus 1 to the sixth. So canceling these two with two here leaves how many powers of x plus 1? 4, right? Okay, so here's our denominator is simplified. We have x plus 1 to the 4th and x squared minus 3 cubed. So all we have to do is simplify the numerator. If we combine our like terms up here, we get negative 4x squared minus 4x. Distribute our negative 3 through. So negative 3x squared minus a minus becomes plus 9. And so here we get negative 7x squared minus 4x plus 9. Okay. What you want to do here is you want to test to see, can you find binomial factors for this trinomial? Okay. And the easiest way to do this is to just use the test for rewriting the middle term. Leading coefficient times the constant is negative 63. Are there two factors of negative 63 whose sum is a negative 4. So we have an, 
a 9, or in this case a negative 9 and a 7. Okay. That's as close as you can possibly come to 4, right? So there's no common factors for that. So that's just what your numerator winds up being. Now if you wanted to factor a negative out of this, or if you did earlier, uh, that's fine as well. Did you cancel any factors from the denominators up here? No. If you go back and test, uh, all of the domain restrictions are accounted for in the simplified form as well. You don't have to do anything else for that. All right. Let me show what would happen if you did this uh, using the. Uh, oops. Hang on, just a second. All right, let's take a look and see what happens if you were to approach this using the idea of the running as complex fractions. Okay, if that's the case, what you're going to do is you're going to rewrite all your negative powers in the denominator of individual fractions. And here's one of the places that students get messed up if they're trying to write it in this way. This power of negative 3 isn't going to move the base into the bottom of the whole fraction. Okay, remember, we're dealing with fractions within fractions. So we have to create a single fraction using just these factors. Okay, so the negative 2 is positive, so that's in the numerator. The x squared minus 3 is negative, so that moves to the denominator. We change the sign. The 2x is positive, so that's going to stay up top. And then the x plus 1 cubed stays on the top as well. Okay, all minus, and then here are 3's up top. The x, squared, or x plus 1 squared is up top but the x squared minus 3 to the negative second gets moved down below, becomes a positive. Okay, in our denominator, that whole thing stays in the denominator, so I can go ahead and simplify it. x plus 1, power to power, we multiply. Okay. So if I'm looking at this, I can either use the first or second method. Again, I'll use the first method for this. And so we're going to combine our numerator as a single fraction. And then our denominator will uh, multiply by that. All right, so if you're trying to uh, multiply this through, you have a negative 2 times a 2x. That gives us a negative 4x. Okay, and so when we find our LCD here, we need an x squared minus 3 quantity cubed. Okay, there's our LCD. We also need x squared minus 3 squared. It's embedded within this. And so if we take the numerator of our first fraction times any LCD factors missing from its denominator, it's not missing anything, minus the next fraction's numerator times any LCD factor missing from its denominator, it's missing one of the x squared minus 3's. Okay, and then I'll, we'll come back and work on this in just a second. So I want to stay with just this numerator. All right, when you look at this, are you going to be able to expand this out and then refactor all of that? No. So even, even if you chose not to use factoring to start this problem, you do have to use it right here. So once again, an, a uh, reason to try to use factoring anyway. So what common factors can you remove from these two groups? x plus 1 is the only common base highest power is, I'm sorry, the lowest power is 2. It's going to have the same form as the original. And so when you remove that common factor here, we're left with a negative 4x times x plus 1. And here when we remove, again, both of those, we're left with a negative 3 times x squared minus 3. And so as we continue to simplify this, we distribute our negative 4 through. So we get negative 4x squared minus 4x. Here we get minus 3x squared plus 9 all over this same denominator. And then finally, if we combine our like terms in here, I'm going to rewrite my numerator. x plus 1 quantity squared. Negative 4 and a negative 3 combined to give you negative 7x squared minus 4x plus 9. 
that's all over x squared minus 3 cubed. And now instead of dividing by this whole quantity here, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So the 1 gets moved to the top. The x plus 1 to the 6th gets moved to the denominator. And so now it's a matter of canceling and then simplifying what you have. Our final answer, negative 7x squared minus 4x plus 9. All over here are x plus 1 to the 4th times x squared minus 3 cubed. Okay, and so you can see even just the difference in the work on this between these two forms. You get the same answer. Okay. If you can do it by factoring, it's going to be easier. Okay. So I would definitely encourage you to try to factor those problems.